G'day crew, Todd from Toxic Garage Customs. Welcome back and thanks for joining me on part two of Will It Run? The Datsun 1000 Shed Find. In this video we start having a look at the starter motor and the starting system generally. In the previous video we ran through the battery and the points and by the end of this video we'll have the starter motor sorted out. So I hope you like that, I hope you like this content. Let me know in your comments, I like your feedback, but otherwise I'll catch you at the end of the video. See you then. If I haven't mentioned it earlier, this is one of those great cars that you buy where it actually comes with keys. Not only one set, but two sets. There's one in the boot and one in the ignition. Let's see what we've got. got the keys in the ignition, it even says that's in keys. Okay, let's have a look. Let's turn the key on. Bingo. Ignition lights, oil pressure light. Okay, I'm not going to use the wipers because the blades are no good. No horn at the moment, that's okay. Got a radio. Radio works. I don't even know how to use it to be honest. Nothing there at the moment. Um, that's the wipers, don't touch that one. Not much going on with that. That's the heater I think. Okay, that's not terribly important. Let's see, it's not in gear. Let's see if it's gonna wind. Ooh. No, not yet. What's this button? I don't know. Okay, so so far we're not winding, that's okay, but we do have lights at the dash. Let's just push the points open with a spark plug and see if we get any spark. We have spark. That spark is there. I'm touching this point to this point, and we've got spark. Got a good, powerful spark there. So if I turn the fan, we should see a spark. If I turn the fan by hand, when the points open, we should see a spark form there. All going well. Yep, so as you saw that, Try that again, we're about to hit another lug, lobe I should say, in a second, points might be a bit dirty. So when I was sparking that I was touching the two bits of metal, not the actual ignition points, so if the points are dirty they're not going to spark terribly well, so let's see, okay, yep, we have spark, might be hard for you to see. Can hear it as well. Hear a little click there. Coming around in a second. Okay, there's spark there. That's good. That spark going to the points. Power going to the points, spark happening. We don't have an ignition winding at the moment, so there could be a starter motor issue. So one we'll have a look at that. I'll turn the ignition off because if you leave the ignition on for too long, the coil heats up. They're oil filled, they can heat and they can overheat. So you don't want to leave your coil on for too long because you'll burn the coil out. So we'll turn that off. So, first things first, as far as um, the electricals go, and we'll get to that in a little while. First things first in that regard will be um, just checking things like fuses. There's a few fuses over here, it's all a little bit dirty. So we'll take those out, we'll give them a clean. Basically any of the electrical connections that may matter. So for the coil, the starter motor, we'll have a look at the wires there, see what condition they're in. Uh, just make sure they're all contacting well. It might just be that we've got a bad contact here, because uh, that's just sort of pushed on there. But, and also what I can do, if I think the starter motor might be a little bit stuck, if I put it in gear and rock it backwards and forwards, it might just free the starter motor up a little. 
we'll have a look at those things. We'll just make sure everything's connected and so on. So we've got a good start. We've got dash lights and spark. Ah, good times. I really haven't done myself any favours by sending everything to my um, new place. I've got no tools. I've got no sandpaper, no anything. But So what I have, I've got a little sanding disc here. Luckily, I've still got some air tools here. And I'm just cleaning these um, fuses up as best I can. I think these are the accessory fuses. I actually don't think this is what the problem is. But what I'm going to do anyway... You can't really expect your electricals to work terribly well if the electricity can't carry through properly. So I'm just going to go through and give all of these fuses, which I've got bunches of these fuses as well, but not here. And I'm not really inclined to go and buy all new stuff just for this project. If I have to, I'll make do. And if I can't do it, I'll just have to put it off until later. But we'll push mechanic it as best we possibly can. So I'll spare you the pain of watching me do this to every single fuse. But as I say, I don't think this is actually what the problem is as far as everything working. What I suspect, I think the ignition switch itself is the issue. Because what happens is the power goes from the battery to the ignition switch. And then the ignition switch sends it out once the ignition is turned on to accessories. I don't even know if this has got accessories. But accessories or starting the car, then the, the, the key sends the power to the starter motor. Then it flicks back to its sort of partially or to its on position without cranking and at that stage then the power goes from the back of the ignition switch to the fuse box and to all of the other stuff like the radio, the wipers, the headlights which I checked they're not working, the indicators which I checked they're not working, the interior light and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes the interior light will work straight off the power without it coming with the, without the ignition being on but what I'm getting at is I'm pretty sure that none of those things, including the starter motor, are working at the moment because I think the ignition switch itself is either faulty, dirty, or something. So to test it, I will attempt to pull the ignition switch out, and if not, I'll just pull the plug off it. And I'll see if I can just hot wire it on the back, so just joining some of the wires together with uh, whatever I can find lying around, which isn't much, some other bits of wire. But in the meantime, I'm cleaning all these up because I'm going to need to do it at some point anyway, so I'll do it now and then um, hopefully when I do get that ignition switch issue sorted out, if that is what it is, then all this other stuff might work at the same time. So I'll clean this up and I'll come back to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do in the moment, I'm going to try and short the um, uh, starter motor out just by basically going from the positive terminal on the starter motor across to the solenoid terminal. So what I'm talking about is this is the positive lead on the battery. It, the lead is going down here and it goes straight into the back of the starter motor and that's it just there. So that one right there is going to that bolt just there on the back of the starter motor and then uh, you've got another wire that goes to the starter switch so you hit the starter, uh, hit the ignition it engages the relay and it makes the um, throw out go out to the clutch pressure plate and turn the motor over and start it. But because the ignition switch isn't working, I'm going to short circuit that. So I'm going to jump a wire from here straight across to there. And that's the starter relay bolt. Very hard for you to see. I'm aware of that. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to just use a shifter because it seems to fit pretty well to go from terminal A to terminal B and try and get that cranking over. So if I can actually get power there, then I'll know one thing that there's power jumping across there and that'll be a matter of whether the starter relay is, the solenoid is going to engage or not. So let's see. Got a little bit more light on the subject now. So what I was referring to was from here, we're going to jump from there across to there. And I'm simply going to hold a shifter there to do that. Probably gonna be a little bit hard for you to see, so that is what I'm going to be doing. So I've got my shifter set 
wide enough so that I can touch those two terminals at the same time and it should wind over, click, do something. So let's have a look. Okay, that was what I was hoping for. So what we have there is I short circuited from there to there. We have power going to the starter motor, engaging the solenoid, winding the motor over really well, quite frankly, it turned over great. And what you won't have seen was that there was good spark jumping out of the points at the same time. So I'll see if I can show you that actually. Okay, let's see if we can get some spark happening there. So I'm just going to do the same thing by short circuiting the starter motor. That's the solenoid not engaging, so it's trying but it's not engaging. There could be a starter motor issue still. Come on, you can do it. So what I'm going to do at this point in time, I'm just going to bang the solenoid on the starter motor a couple of times with something to give it a bit of a jolt. So literally, the side of my starter motor, I'm just going to give it a hit. With my ratchet handle. See if that just engages the solenoid a bit. Okay, it doesn't want to engage now, does it? Okay, so there could be worn teeth on the um, ring gear, might not be engaging. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the car in gear for a moment and rock it backwards and forwards. Okay, I've pumped tyres up. I've tried to crank it a couple more times and the solenoid won't engage. So I've pumped up the flat tyre. I'm just going to put it in gear. Cockatoo, go away. And I'm going to try and wind, uh, push the car backwards and forwards with it in gear to get it to move around to a different place on the flywheel. Um, and maybe the solenoid will engage then. So we'll see. Well, I guess looking at the positive side, I've never looked underneath the car before, so now I have the opportunity to do that. And as I've been jacking it up, and the jack's creaking a little bit, which is a really good reason not to get too far under it, this car doesn't have springs, it would appear, coil springs. It doesn't have coil overs, it doesn't have struts. It has a transverse leaf spring going from one side to the other. That's it that you can see just there, those four bands. So this is like a an old fashioned, like a gasser or something like that. Like a really old fashioned thing, like a Model T, Model A, something like that. A transverse leaf spring on control arms. I've never seen that on a Japanese car before. So that's interesting. It is a little bit hot rod really, isn't it? Okay, so I'm um, pretty sure they've got drum, yeah, we've got drum brakes. 
they, this is this is vintage Japanese technology here. Look at that. That's an 100. Wow. Or one two or one two. I think they called it Datsun 1000, but anyway, I think this thing's had a little hit in the front end at some stage. Doesn't bother me. Got a few little dents and bruises. Hey, that's all part of its history. Anyway, this isn't getting the starter motor out because it just isn't. Now, I'm obviously going to need to look at the brakes and I have no doubt whatsoever I'm going to be rebuilding the brakes as well. The car rolls backwards and forwards so they're not completely seized, but I have no doubt they'll need doing. So I'm going to put something underneath here so I don't get crushed underneath the car and I'll lower it down. Bricks is not something I would ever recommend, but it is pretty much all I have at the moment. Okay, now we're seriously looking carport cowboy, but we're on some bricks. We're on three bricks there and we're on two bricks and a couple of bits of timber there because I couldn't get the car to go up evenly. Who cares? So, what we have. Got the car up. It actually is pretty stable. Got the handbrake on, got a brick behind it. Shouldn't roll back any further than it already has. So, underneath here, what have we got? Well, let's have a look at the car since I haven't been under here. Got oil leaks. So, yep, looks like front main seal. Um, yeah, there's a bit of oil around. I already mentioned the brakes. There's obviously old grease and stuff, which is what you'd expect. Steering linkages and arms. Haven't checked any of that yet. The steering on this thing is incredibly light. I guess it's got 12 inch wheels. And it's, I don't know, the car probably weighs about 800 kilos or something. So I guess it would be light. Little four speed gearbox there. What else we got? The floor pans look to be pretty much perfect to me. There's not even really a dent that I can see, let alone rust. That looks clean. It's got all underguard um, stone shield or whatever you call it under there. I will check the gearbox levels and stuff at some stage, probably while it's up. How do the rails look? Looks good. Radiator support, base. Rails, I'll tell you what, let's look at looks okay. This is underneath the passenger side front mud guard. Don't look too bad. The driver's side look like. I think I can see in it. It's a leaf. Probably doesn't need to be there. Looks okay. It's better than okay. Obviously a bit of mud flap missing. Tell you what, this thing looks as dry as so rust wise good. Okay, starter motor. One bolt, and there's another one up the top. They look like they're about 14 mil. I'll disconnect the battery, I'll disconnect the power from the starter motor. I'll take the starter motor out and let's see what we find. When I was going through the car, Found a whole bunch of stuff and I've sort of sorted it out somewhat. So I was looking for a screwdriver before, just remembered. There's some in here. And look, there's some spanners. That's a 14mm, 17mm open ender combo. 12 and 13mm. I can recognize it 2199. Set applies. Oh, there's a file there. I could have used it before. Okay. And there's a little, what's this? Quarter five sixteen. It's going to be much good for this car. Well, this might be the tool kit that I remove the starter motor with. Let's do it. That'll do me. They're not connected. There's the only no power going to the starter. Let's disconnect the power from the starter motor. I'd say that's not fourteen mil. Don't ever set it. It's Banner, top of your battery by the way, it's really bad practice. The main thing is if it contacts the terminals and you short out your battery. So I'm laying it across ways. People will tell you that you shouldn't do it anyway and I do agree with that, but they're not here at the moment. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. I've got her unbolted. Drop the nuts and bolts and washers. Pretty sure it's not, well it is only two bolts. Leave the bolts there. 
hopefully I can get to it from here. Might be easier from the top. Actually, let's see. It's only small. What is that? It's only small. And yeah, it's going to come out through the top rather than the bottom, I would say. So, well, let's go to the top. So you can see it's sort of sitting loosely there. Let's try and get it out. Let's try and feel a bit might not work so well. I'll show you the struggle is real. Just holding the camera. Now there's not a lot of room here. Small starter motor, and it's a small engine. Oh, look at that! Lovely, one starter motor. Okay, that's her. So what I was doing previously was arcing out so the battery connects to this one. Battery connects to this one, and then I was arcing across to this one. And that terminal just there, where are we? that terminal just there, that's where the wire comes from the ignition. So you turn the ignition, it sends power to that, it sends the solenoid out, and it then pushes this gear out to engage with the ring gear to get it going. So let's have a look. Spin that around. Not missing any teeth. Spins freely. I'll give it a little bit of a wash down and then we'll put some power from here to here and just see it should sort of jump up in the air and try and engage but if the solenoid's not working it's less likely to do that so we'll give it a clean we'll see what happens Okay, you saw me give it a clean up, so I'm not getting filthy dirty now. I've made myself a cup of coffee as well. So because I've got nothing to connect anything to, I've got no wire hanging around or anything, I've just got the starter motor sitting on the negative terminal of the battery and the where the power goes in, that bolt where I was hot wiring it before, I've literally just got that sitting on top of the positive terminal of the battery, just here. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to arc out from here up to here and see if the solenoid works now i've done nothing to this other than clean it so if it does anything then it either will mean that it's all good and it just needs to clean or it'll just mean that it's purely good luck and it may work again and it may not work again let's see so I'm literally just going to short circuit from one terminal to the other now what we're seeing we're going to see if we hear noise and we're going to have a look to see if the gear engages. And I'm holding the starter motor still because they do have a tendency to jump sideways. Okay, so pretty much every time I did that then, you could see the gear throwing out, and that's what it's meant to do. The solenoid pushes an arm and it throws that gear out towards the ring gear. It engages with the ring gear and winds the motor over. 
So and if you saw little puffs of smoke, that's just where the earth is, where it's contacting here, it's just a little bit of resistance. A um, bit cowboyish, but it's working. So <coughs> the, I'm looking at the gears here. They are a bit ground off, so this thing is not great, to be honest. Um, it's a bit ground off. That could be why it's not engaging properly. I did, I'm not gonna try and show you. I did have a look at the ring gear. Ring gear actually looks okay. The starter motor gear there is a bit worn. That could be the source of our problem. Maybe it's throwing out and it's just not engaging with the uh, ring gear properly. So that obviously will cause a problem. So I'm suspecting they'll probably need to um, either replace the starter motor or at least the gear. Um, so we'll look into that. So I'm just going to go down the, the road. Of, I'm going to put this thing back in. Maybe just cleaning it up's made a difference, but... It'll be a 50-50 to be completely honest, but that's all we're doing. We're just got, this is earth. So remember the earth lead goes from the battery to the engine, goes to the body, goes to the metal. So when this is bolted to the gearbox or the engine, then it is part of the earth. And then we have the power going to the bolt on the other side. It goes into the solenoid, it goes into the solenoid. And I'm just short circuiting from one to the other to get the throw out to work. So we'll see that again. So, as far as a bench test goes, I might take that off there. As far as a bench test goes, it seems to be working. With whether it engages with the ring gear or not is yet to be seen. Right, I got the starter motor back in. Literally took about five minutes. I've just got the uh, wire there that goes from the positive terminal of the battery. Just giving it a clean up, just with a bit of sandpaper and uh, not just this, this sanding disc and um, I sprayed some brake cleaner on it. If you're wondering why people, like including myself, use brake cleaner, it's just a good cleaning agent that doesn't leave any residue. So uh, it's, it's a good product to use. You can buy it in bulk, I'm just using an aerosol cans at the moment. So I'm gonna reconnect that, and then we'll see if that made any difference. It'll either engage or it won't. If it doesn't, then when I have to pull it out again, at least it's clean, and we've ruled that out. Now this still hasn't fixed the ignition switch problem, because I'm certain that that is an issue, the ignition switch. But um, if I can jump it like I am, I just want to get it winding over, is really what I'm trying to do at the moment. So I'll connect that up and I'll come back. Okay, so a moment ago I came in here and I um, uh, turned the ignition switch on. I don't even know why. I turned the ignition switch on. And when I did, um, this happened. If you can hear that, that's the heater. Heater fan. Two speed fan. So that happened, and the reason that happened was because I cleaned up the uh, fuses, I think, is the reason. Let's see if the radio turns on. Yeah. Whether I can tune it or not, it's a different matter. It's an AM radio, but there's power there. Okay, we got radio. Now, what's this button do? Okay, that's the windscreen washer. The lights. Let's turn that on. Let's see what happened next. We'll try the indicators. No. Oh, yeah, there we go. We've got a right indicator. Got a left indicator. Let's have a look at the back of the car. So that's pretty good. That's probably just some cleaning the fuses, I'd say. That's what I like about old cars. Generally speaking, you just give something a clean. We've got a uh, tail light. Um, yep, I think there's a parker there. And there's a parker there. You give things a clean up, and that's often all it needs. Got an indicator, got a headlight, got a headlight. Indicator working here. Let's try the other indicator, and we'll try the other boom. I presume that's low boom. Where's the dip switch? Is it on the floor? Where is the dip switch? Anyone know where the dip switch is? I was anticipating it being on the floor. Yeah, don't know where it is. What does this one do? It's probably a choke. There you go, we'll look for that in a moment. Let's not worry about where the dip switch is too much at the moment. I'm curious to know where it is though. Ah, it's on the 
on the column. How about that over the Japanese? Japanese. Because you've got to remember, this speedo is in miles per hour. That's how old this car is. But still, they can operate the high beam, low beam off the column. Now, is there a blue light or anything? No. Okay, well, missing a lens, but flashing. Good. And, well, got no idea if that's high beam or low beam at the moment. That's something. the other way and I think that might be high burn oh, we'll work that one out well so far so good one the horn works horn works can't really ask for much more than this can you I'm not going to put the wipers on because I'll scratch the windscreen interior light interior light now you turn it off it's definitely on now, is there a switch on the door? I don't know. Let's not worry about that one at the moment either. Okay. So, hopefully, it can turn... Oh, there we go. Yeah, that, that turns it off. It's just a wiggle. I could imagine that could be a battery flattener, if you're not careful. Okay. Well, it's in neutral. Let's go all out and see if it winds over. No, not quite that exciting. Okay. Did I say it wasn't quite that exciting? We have a starter motor that's engaging. And is the engine actually winding? I can see the fan spinning. I'll put you, oh, that was my head. I'll put you in a position where you can see. So, that's a huge... Well, what do you reckon? I'm pretty happy with the progress. Got the starter motor all going. Got the motor turning over. So uh, we've just got to play around with a few other things. Got to get the uh, the fuel system sorted a little bit more. And we move along to that in the next video. So if you're liking what you're seeing and you're enjoying it, please let me know. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, if you're new to the video, then I hope you go back and watch the other ones as well. I've got a whole series of them. I'm up to nearly 100 videos now on different things. So uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.